I mean, now I feel like I definitely want to adapt my favorite two-parter, Hellboy, Batman, Starman. Oh, that's and, a good one. And so Jeremy obviously would be Hellboy, and I, of course, will be Starman. And uh, I don't know. We could we could just have we could make Leo's dreams come true and have him be Batman. Actually, that would be great to see Leo as Batman. I would love that. Yeah. So maybe maybe for the future. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Leo is Batman. What do you mean? Have you ever seen the two of them in the same room at the same time? No. You know, I really have it, actually. <laughs> Lord of Oak, come to my hand. I, Lion Oak, command it. Thundercats. Ho! And you're watching the Jorkinen. Where We got water. We refueled. Someone definitely went to the bathroom. So I just want to go over this real quick. So we're going to be yeah. talking about Hellboy Krampusnut for the stage directions. Again, we have the fabulous, fabulous Mr. Koopa. It's doing so good. Cool. And uh, doing Hellboy and the Priest, Dr. Malo. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm a little nervous. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. The Christmas song lyrics, Ghost Woman, and Liz Sherman is the awesome Carrie Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear me sing again. <laughs> yeah, I will be doing Wilhelm Schultz and Krampus. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. Uh, it's, it's, do it like your Joker. You. <laughs> do it like Joker? I thought yeah, about like... it. Uh, and the uh, Ghost Children, I can't wait to hear this. The Ghost Children mm. is going to be a, incredible. Young boy, mm. Professor Broom. I, I, don't know how I'm gonna do multiple, I don't know how I'm going to do multiple voices of children. I'm going to be like, uh, hey, no, no, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I just, side note, this is one. This is an Eisner I believe this is an Eisner award-winning issue. This is one of the few that I have signed by Mike Mignola, um, being a huge Christmas fan as I am. Um, this is truly a beautiful one-shot that is both seasonal and terrifying. And of course, our resident horror culturalist, uh, Miss Sanders over there, was more than happy because it was either going to be this or what we're going to do. It's a very merry Cthulhu Christmas. So, <laughs> How about the corpse? That's <laughs> good. Uh, I can't oh, find that yeah. yeah, I forgot about the corpse, right? All right, next time. All right, everybody. So we're gonna get started. So I don't know. Hope you got your cocoa ready because it's gonna get chilly. Hellboy Krampus Knocked by Mike Mignola and Adam Hughes. We see a snow covered cemetery. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. More of the snowy cemetery is shown, which includes a church. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Hellboy walks amid a snow-covered forest in the cemetery, church along a nearby village in the background. To save us from all Satan's power. Hellboy hears something that catches his attention during this trek. When we are gone astray, please. Well-dressed female spirit that almost blends in with her snow-laden environment stands and speaks to Hellboy. A small box dates this story as Austria, 1975. Save my boy. The spirit turns to dis disappear in the woods, her dress billowing behind her as Hellboy tries to address her. Lady? Hellboy runs after her, brushing against snowy branches and trees. Hey, wait! Hellboy looks outward. His face is a mix of confusion and bewilderment. Hellboy seeks nothing but sees nothing but untouched snow, save for one item left there deliberately. Please. The item is an old toy that appears to be an elephant on wheels that one would pull on a string. Hellboy looks through the empty snowy forest, but now sees an impressively sized house with lights on in the distance. Tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and... Hellboy! The door to the house opens to what appears to be an older man who carries a cane and calls out to welcome him. Hellboy, hello. Come in, come in. Hellboy continues to walk forward towards the open door, looking grouchy, like likely cold. Mr. Schultz, Wilhelm Schultz. Mr. Schultz acknowledges that it is he, and he beckons to welcome Hellboy into his home. Ah, yes. Come in, please. 
Hellboy is inside where he sees a well-lit fireplace and a dining room table full of food with nicely decorated yet sl slightly empty dining room. You'll stay for supper? You were expecting me. <clears throat> of course. Mr. Schultz and Hellboy continue to talk while we see a close-up of the set table and all the prepared food. But please, sit. Help yourself. No thanks. This will be about that business at the church the other day. That's right. It's a flashback. Mr. Schultz stands looking sheepishly while the furnishings of an entire church, candles, pews, books, flowers, chairs, etc., are all levitating in the air before a shocked priest. Good Lord! Uh, no, sir. Hardly that. Hellboy speaks, his background illuminated by the fire. You scared the crap out of a lot of people. Mr. Schultz talks, his beard and wrinkled face illuminated also by the fire. And made a rather expensive mess, I imagine. I'm sorry about that, but I heard you were in the neighborhood and thought it might be the sort of thing to get your attention. Hellboy stands overlooking the meal as it was prepared specifically for him. So I'd come to dinner. Mr. Schultz pours wine into two glasses as Hellboy stands silently. Yeah, you'll have a drink at least. Mr. Schultz and Hellboy's right hand clink their glasses together in cheers. Cheers. Hellboy and Mr. Schultz both down their drinks together in the, in the silhouetted living room. Hellboy reaches into his chest pocket of his signature trench coat. Thanks. Now, apparently, you told Father Mueller that you weren't really human. Hellboy holds his left hand in his left hand an old fashioned, nay, ancient drawing of a creature. That, in fact, you claim to be this guy. Mr. Schultz holds a depiction of Krampus. Mr. Schultz looks at the drawing. Is not a very good likeness. The old man hands him back the drawing and almost looks cheerful in spite of what he says. <laughs> there should be a lot more blood. Hellboy tucks the drawing back into his jacket chest pocket while Mr. Schultz puts his glasses back on the table. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me. Over there, we've got Santa Claus and the elves with the toys. Over here. Hellboy continues to talk while Mr. Schultz's focus is occupied elsewhere. You've got St. Nicholas and his monster sidekick, the Krampus. While Nick's handing out toys, Krampus, that's you. Hits the bad kids with sticks and rides them around in a basket. I guess so they'll be good next year. Next year? No, once I've had my hands on them, they never see another year. Hellboy isn't thrilled where this is going. Yeah. Mr. Schultz is staring at his reflection, contemplating what to do next. You don't believe me? You need convincing? Hellboy's eye focuses. Mr. Schultz breaks the mirror with his hand. <laughs> Mr. Schultz tosses something shocking towards Hellboy to catch. Have a look at this little fellow. Whoa! What the? Hellboy holds a small child's skull in his hands with glowing green eyes. Little Gottfried Huber, Sandsberg, 1832. Hellboy's eyes glaze over at the same color of glowing green. See how he ended his days? Little boy plays in his room, illuminated by a single candle, alone. The little blonde child plays with the toy, the same toy that we saw earlier in the snow. Little Gottfried looks to the left. Mama? Gottfried cries out as a clawed hand reaches out towards him. <laughs> His elephant toy flies in the air among the blood red black background. A boy snaps out of the trance, realizing his grip releasing his grip with both hands of the skull. Son of a... The skull falls to the ground with a clunk. <clears throat> Hellboy is shocked by what we can see in the room, which is now illuminated by a different light, casting a shadow. Now you know. 
What the hell? Exactly. Mr. Schultz's real form as Krampus is revealed as he stands next to his cabinet, which is full of other skulls, presumably of his other victims. Hellfire, smoke, and pandemonium. Do you remember that place? I don't, though I know I was born there. So what crime did I commit to be sent here? This cold world, this prison. What could I have done to deserve this? And how long am I bound to stay? You have been here barely a minute, while I have endured hundreds and hundreds of years. Krampus, they named me Krampus, I have been. We see Krampus's face with his tongue waving around. Long enough. I am tired of it. Kill me and send me home. Hellboy raises his gun and fires at the creature. Okay. Blam! Krampus yells out as the bullet hits home, a spatter of blood spewing forward. No! Krampus knocks Hellboy's gun out of his hand. Not like that. Krampus grabs Hellboy's leg and swings him around, hitting the fireplace hard enough to crack the stone. As a man's toy, I'm a prince of hell. Gah! Krampus throws Hellboy at the table, scattering all the decorations and food everywhere with a big crack. Krampus strikes Hellboy across his face with his open claws. Do it now. Hellboy strikes Krampus with his right hand, the blow sending the creature backwards. Oh yeah! Boom! Krampus crashes into his cabinet with a big smash, scattering glass of his skull collection everywhere. Krampus springs forward, his rotting flesh having peeled away to reveal a demonic goat skull with glowing red eyes, with the, gla with the glass, skulls, and chains from his handcuffs everywhere. Yes, kill me. Krampus hits Hellboy again, this time the blow driving him so hard into the floor it causes it to splinter. Kill me. <laughs> Krampus stands above Hellboy as he lies there on the floor, still reeling from the blow. Kill me. Jeez, I'm working on it. Krampus grabs Hellboy by the shoulder, his claws digging deep into draw blood. Give me a... Krampus grabs Hellboy by the throat, his hands wrapped around Hellboy's neck as he is slammed into the wall with a... Bam! Kill me! The skulls lay there on the ground with shards of glass and bone between them, almost as if they're watching the fight. Krampus's blood-red demonic eyes seem crazy with anger and frustration. Kill me. Hellboy is beginning to lose consciousness due to the lack of air. One, one eye open at the other one, it's closed. Working on it. We see the elephant toy from before still laying in the snow. The elephant toy now is joined by an old-fashioned toy soldier in a ball, both protruding out from the snow as well. Hellboy is randomly back in the snowy forest, similar to, to the one before. He's confused by the sudden change of place and time. Hellboy's eyes, as a voice calls out to him, Please. Corpses of the undead or, deki or decaying children appear among the barren tree trunks in the snowy forest, likely Krampus's victims. I didn't do it. That was me. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'll be I'm good. I promise. Hellboy acknowledges the children who continue to appear, begging for his help. I'm doing the best I can, you guys. Just help me. Please. Help me. A small skeletal hand tugs at the corner of Hellboy's coat. Hellboy looks downward. The skeletal child looks up in bloody clothes, holding a butcher knife. He's just so tired. Help him. Use this. Krampus's red eyes pause as if he sees something big happen. Krampus and Hellboy have that moment of clarity. Oh. Yeah. Krampus looks down to see the knife buried deep into his chest, Hellboy's hand hovering next to it, realizing it's been done. Uh, how'd you get that? It's a mystery, pal. Merry Christmas. Three loud. A 
attract Hellboy's attention. Now what? Krampus is down on his knees, feeling that his death is finally imminent, surrounded by the skulls of his victims. Hellboy stands there, still trying to understand what's happening, as the ghost child from before appears before him. Thank you, brother. I don't think so. And what's that noise? Bones. A chest in a random part of the, ho- of the house opens to reveal a human skull. This house is full of bones. More skulls pull out of the cabinets and the drawers into the house, spilling into the floor. More and more pour, pour, pour out of the closets and off the shelves of this house of death and horror. Skulls on the floor begin to smolder and billow smoke. Krampus enjoys that his final wish has been granted. Free at last, I... Krampus's face realizes that something is not right. Wait. Krampus looks at Hellboy, who is simply standing there, watching all this transpire. What, what's happening? Some, something's wrong. Krampus falls on his back, writhing in pain. Something. Krampus' body is transformed into the shape of that of a large ram or goat. Krampus' form shrinks a bit more before stopping permanently. White doves, likely the spirit of Krampus' victims finally able to rest in peace, fly out of the windows and chimney of the house into the night sky. Hellboy braces himself against the wall, happy the ordeal is over. Krampus, animalish corpse, lays there, still with the knife embedded in his chest, as one of the skulls. Well, that was something. 72 hours later, we see a snowy building with, that is the BPRD uh, headquarters in Fairfield, Connecticut on Christmas Day. Well, I wonder what old Harry Middleton will make of this. I'll have to call him in the morning. We see Hellboy talking with his mentor, the surrogate father, Professor uh, Trevor Broom, one of the BPRD's festive living rooms, while the BPRD agent Liz Sherman sits near the fireplace. For years, he's maintained that the Krampus was actually the demon goat of the witch's Sabbath done up in the fancy dress for the holidays, and I've argued that it was just a slightly nastier variation of the Scandinavian Yule Goat. Yule Goat. Yule Goat. Jolupukuki. <laughs> the pre-Christian goat man version of Father Christmas. But I don't think either Harry or I ever considered there might be an actual goat involved. Hellboy continues to talk to Professor Broom while Liz Sherman plays with her pyrokinesis. And not just a regular goat, but a magic talking goat who somewhere along the line forgot he was a goat. Started thinking he was a prince from hell. And when he got tired of doing terrible things to children, he wanted to go back to hell. Except he was just a goat. Who can say, my boy? Who can say? It's a pretty weird story for Christmas. Professor Broom encourages Hellboy with a pat on the shoulder while taking talking to Liz as well. There must always be ghost stories at Christmas, Elizabeth. And you, thanks to you, those poor children will finally receive a proper burial and rest in peace. We see the tops of the snow-covered graves, possibly from a cemetery at the beginning of the story. Hellboy adds his last thought before sipping his drink. And that thing, too. Whatever it was. We see an old-fashioned makeshift cross with the Krampus drawing from before nailed to it. We see the grave in the same forest of that creature previously called its home, the burial marked by the pile of toys from its now-rest victims. The The end. Bravo! Nice! Oh, man. Had Uh, yet again... A minute break, we would have made it. Yeah. Leo, yet again, you creep the shit out of me. (laughs) A round of applause also for Justin with the biggest part ever having to read. Y'all did read and read and read. read read. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, thanks for the juicy part. Absolutely, buddy. You're always welcome. But uh, what did you guys what did you guys think? This is buddy. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> definitely good time. <laughs> Stop reaching. Can't but, reach. I'm sorry. I need. I do need to say, Carrie, your singing 
the lyrics that was such a good idea that was beautiful that was a nice touch to the beginning yeah, great job oh thank you yes yeah. I was worried we were going to do it in Austria. I'm like, there's no way. Be... God, there is a very gentleman. Because I don't nope. know how to do an Austrian accent. It would just be so weird. very nice. <laughs> and then, Leo, holy fucking shit. The second you started talking, I was like, oh, I'm creeped out. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, God. And, and uh, yeah. And then, Carrie, you did good. And, and Jeremy, you, you did. I was I don't know how to say this. You, you did ghost children well. Uh, uh, the was awesome. It's like, son of a bitch. Yeah. I think I eventually found my Hellboy voice. I think in the beginning, I was kind of searching oh, for it. You did really well. Yeah. 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 Your Hellboy was great. I, I, I still, I'm sorry. I'm the harsh critic. I still, still think Jeremy's was great. The tone oh, and everything. I appreciate everything. it. I like yeah. it both. So, you know, that's, right. that's the thing. So, there you go. Listen. Listen. Listen, you know what? It's it's okay because we, you know, it's the best part. We can have one Hellboy and two Hellboys. Yes, we can. You know, absolutely. All right. Well, guys, I have to say this is a great way. This is just a boost to the holiday spirit. And All honestly, right. next week, uh, huh? Indeed, yeah. we're gonna. So, so everybody, this is officially the last <laughs> show of Splash Pages for 2023. We. Because the holidays are going to wreck us worse than Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball ever did. Um, we are going to take some time to be with friends and family, recover, um, you know, not really think about what our bank account looks like, Justin. Um, and, but honestly, and, I, and I'm not going to speak for everybody here, but I do want to say thank you so much for everybody. It's been a great year and we've only watched the show grow and we have some wonderful plans for next year so if you're thinking bigger better deal you probably be half right but thank you so much for taking the time to be with us we really appreciate everyone who comments subscribes talks about the show we we wouldn't be where we are without your support and we and really appreciate it we're at the 300 301 we broke oh, 300. oh thank you guys oh, oh, so oh, much oh, for our Christmas present. Oh, uno. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you said 300. And I was like, no, I'm not taking this shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell you what, you guys should do that. Your next, um, your next milestone is you should have the uh, loyal audience choose what the next read is going to be. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Get us the three. What do you think? 350, 375. Oh, that's, oh, I mean, I was thinking 500, but still. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. Let's, I like let's do 500. It'll, it'll, right. be, it'll be a big push to 500. And, okay. Uh, let, let's. Should, okay. Let's uh, let's set a goal. Do we want to hit 500 by February 1st? I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was out loud. Uh, that's, a, that's a steep goal. March, there, March really. 1st. We'll do March 1st. No, Leo. Let's Leo. Let's 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 be reasonable here. Let's aim for the end of the year. We're at 500. If we get there sooner, then we'll make a bigger goal. We'll make a bigger goal. We'll do the stretch goals. Okay. Yeah, but it's like our Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, Leo, you know what? Do you want to just yeah. sign us off for the last time of 2023? Yeah, we'll we'll wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. You know me. You know how to find me. You know, there's a bunch of stuff in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, I run the Dorkening Podcast Network. There's a lot of awesome shows doing a lot of awesome stuff. Head on over to thedorkening.com. And uh, you can find some awesome shows. I'm sure Justin will tell you a couple of his as well. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's been fun this year. And uh, you know, it's it's uh, I enjoyed hanging with all of you. And we will kick it off to uh, Jar Jar. Should old acquaintance be forgot? No. All right. Well, um, happy new year to everybody since we're not going to see each other for that. And, um, yeah, uh, check out the new episodes of the re-education of Nancy Ann Ritter, which I, I, I'm shocked people are actually watching. So you'll have friends to watch with. Um, and, uh, just keep coming back to splash pages every Tuesday night. Cause we've got a lot coming up in the next year. That's pretty big. And it, it's, it's going to be a good year to watch. Every yeah. Good year. Uh -huh. Yeah.
Not only agree. Mr. Justin Kupa. Hey, guys. Congrats on the uh, year splash pages. Great show. You know, when I'm not on, I'm watching. So and uh, th- so is my my family. Uh, congrats. Thanks for having me on this. Uh, if Absolutely. you like this sort of thing, you can check out my show, Epic Tales from the Sewers, where we go through the Ninja Turtles comics in a very similar fashion, just without uh, creepy Leo reading and uh, without mm-hmm. the uh, melodious sounds of uh, these folks. Leo um, would yeah, be a out. great splinter. Yeah, <laughs> he might be a good splinter, right? He totally would be. <laughs> but um, our other show on the Dorkening is The Dork Knight. It is a Batman-centric podcast. And uh, Comics Paradox, which is all about the multiverse, Elseworlds, and what-ifs. Yeah, definitely going to be big this year with uh, uh, DC doing more Elseworlds. That's right. Awesome stuff. Miss Carrie Sanders. Hey, everybody. You catch me here on The Dorkening. You can catch me on the Ally Network, which is now with the dorkening and um we are taking breaks i just was waving at you with my puppet on backwards Roderick Oscar says hi uh <laughs> we're taking breaks on pretty much every show i'm on you yeah. hi how you doing um for the holidays but that gives me plenty of time to write up some stuff uh hello to everybody over that has been watching us off of the hellfire media hellfire entertainment media group facebook page because you guys have been making a big difference and uh, we've been getting a lot more viewers on all of the shows that we've been sending there so thank you guys and have a happy new year and marry whatever you celebrate or if you don't just have a good time yeah awesome yeah mr drew hey everybody i'm drew malo and right below me is my instagram because i'm tired of saying it because these schmucks will always point it out so if you if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook. Um, I don't do a Twitter. I'm on Instagram, and we've got so many great things in the works for next year. A lot of stuff that's you're gonna have to stick around to see what we have uh, up our sleeve. Um, but thank you so much. Seriously, it's been a great year, and you know, and we really honestly hope that if you like what you're seeing here, be your own hero. Start your own show, you know, like there's no limit. I mean, heck, Carrie started off as a fan and now she's a part of the show, you know? So anything is possible if you want hard enough. And honestly, if you do, we would love to, to, to welcome you into this weird, wonderful world of podcasting and being a fucking nerd. So um, I enjoy it, even though these people drive me crazy every tuesday and thank you again for for staying with us the best and most happy holidays to all of you um whatever you celebrate whether if you're if you're a santa whether if it's celebrating hanukkah kwanzaa yule whether if you're an atheist whether you're a scrooge or grinch okay you do you and have a great holiday season and as always, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, and a Happy New Year, too. If you're a serial killer, take the time off. Drew, yeah. you, you, you left out Satanists. Are you going to discriminate? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. We already, we did a Krampus story. We talked about hell. We're good enough. We covered bases. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We were so close. We were almost at an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> all right next time um maybe next year but thank you everybody be well happy holidays and read more hellboy Ooh. bye everybody thank you